I've always been of opinion that a man who desires to get married should know either everything or nothing. Which do you know? I know nothing, Lady Bracknell. I'm pleased to hear it. I think she's very formidable and extremely frightening. But she comes from quite, um, you know, she's had no fortune when she married Lord Bratfine. She did rather well for herself early on. And so that's a bit of a clue to her. Um, and I think when her guard is down, probably, she could be quite a lot of fun. These people have never been tested very much. These are people who, who uh, basically have almost had to invent obstacles for themselves. They, they, they can indulge all kinds of paradoxes because they're such privileged people. For example, Cecily has a fantasy about me, what, I'm, what she wants me to be like. Uh, in, uh, and, and that's very different from what I am like in the movie. So uh, the fantasy sequences, are, uh, I think, are very strong. My wicked cousin Ernest. I'm not really wicked at all, cousin Cecily. You mustn't think that I'm wicked. Well, if you are not, then you've certainly been deceiving us all in a very inexcusable manner. Well, I have been rather reckless. Hmm, I'm glad to hear it. In fact, now that you mention the subject, I have been very bad in my own small way. I play Cecily Cardew, and um, she's just a very headstrong young girl who uh, is very adamant about keeping secrets of her diary, and um, she just knows what she wants out of life, and I think she's a really interesting uh, mix of a girl and a woman, in the sense that she understands a lot about uh, social grace and things like that, but she has a tendency to throw it all away in the spirit of having fun and having a good time. Ernest proposed to me exactly ten minutes ago. Oh, it's very curious. We asked me to be his wife yesterday afternoon at 5.30. You would care to verify the incident, pray do so. I never travel without my diary. One should always have something sensational to read in the train. I play Gwendolyn Fairfax, and she is, she's a society girl, and she's kind of a modern woman in some ways, um, but I think it belies what's underneath. I think underneath it all, she's, there is a kind of, um, not naivety, but she hasn't really experienced a hell of a lot because she's not really in that environment. She's quite protected, but she's very smart, I think. And she's very good with words. Well, personally, darling, to speak quite candidly, I, I don't much care about the name of Ernest. I, I don't think it, it suits me at all. It suits you perfectly. It is a divine name. It has a music of its own. It produces vibrations. Loaded, freighted with sexual charge. So, yeah, it was a bit knee knocking. Well, it's a, a wonderful story. And it's a, it's a, the language in it is. I mean, it's as perfect a story as Twelfth Night is for Shakespeare and The Marriage of Figaro is for Mozart. You know, it's, it is an absolute... It's a perfectly written piece. My own Ernest. The importance of being earnest.